Hi guys, welcome back here to the gun room. I'm Dave for MyGunValues.com and today I'm, I'm kind of excited about this one. So I wanted to uh, share it with you, share, you a little, share a little bit of history and uh, then tell you a little bit more about this particular firearm. Um, this, for those of you who don't know or don't recognize it, this is a Savage Model 1899. Um, Savage was started by a gentleman named Arthur Savage in 1892 is when he started developing this rifle. Arthur, like everybody else at that time frame, wanted to get military contracts. He wanted to win, you know, that was where the money was. If you could get your rifle accepted by the military, then you could really, uh, you could really make some good money. Our military in the United States never accepted a lever action rifle uh, as a military arm. There were some sold to Russia that Winchester built, but you know most of these companies never got a never got a military contract. So, like most of the companies, what Savage did was he turned to the civilian market. In 1895, he came out with the model 1895. It looked remarkably similar to this gun. Uh, the biggest visible difference in them is if you look on the top of the bolt right here, you'll see this little rectangular square. It's part of the firing mechanism. On the 1895's, that was a round hole. And they both both the 1895s and the early 1899s all came in one caliber, 303 Savage. That was it. So, you know, it's kind of like the old motto from Henry Ford, you can have any color you want so long as it's black. Well, Savage, you can have any caliber you want so long as it's a 303 Savage. So the first uh, roughly eight years of production, that was the only thing that was available. So... What Savage did though, and I, I need to stand up here, I should have grabbed this before I sat down, but I did. Uh, for comparison's sake, I wanted to show you this. <clears throat> Sorry about that, folks. So, This is a 303 Savage cartridge casing. The, you know, it's typical of the period. Big old rim back here. Uh, fairly short intermediate length. Uh, I think 7.62 by 39 today. Um, you're not far off. And a fairly long neck. This, for comparison's sake, is a Winchester 30 WCF, or more commonly known today, 3030. The 3030 beat the 303 Savage out on the market by by a few months. So you know the the rule is whoever's first usually has the good advantage. And Winchester, who was the you know the originator of this round, Winchester had a huge lead on Savage. If you wanted a lever action rifle. In 1895, Winchester was the company. In 1895, you still had the 1873, the 1876, the 18, uh, let's see here, the 1886, the 1892, the 1894, and the beginning of the 1895. So you had six different lever guns in production. It was a pretty crowded marketplace. So Savage, you know, Arthur Savage was a great, uh, he was a great promoter. Today, you know, if he was a politician, we'd call him, he'd, he'd be great at spin. If you look at these two casings, you'll notice that they're very, very similar. In fact, and, and in all actuality, they have exactly the same case capacity. The Savage round is a little bit bigger around, but his neck, the neck's longer. 
than the corresponding 3030, but they hold the same amount of powder. So if you're loading for one of these, uh, 3030 data will work in a 303 Savage. What Savage did was Winchester came out with theirs with 100 in 1895 with a 160 grain bullet. So what Savage did was he standard loaded a 190 grain bullet and claimed it had you know all these superior ballistics and it was just basically advertising that as we know it today the hyperbole and the spin that you know that 30 grains of bullet weight made all the difference really didn't but that's how he promoted his product to stand apart from Winchester and while we're on the subject of the 303 all only Savage ever chambered the round in a production rifle the round was discontinued when World War I hit. So all these guns only exist in firearms made from 1899 to 1941. There may be some special uh, derivative that some gunsmith out there chambered, but in a production gun, Savage was it. Consequently, nobody has made ammunition for these in, I believe it's about 20 years now. Give or, give or take a little bit on that. So it is strictly a hand-loading proposition to hand-load the 303 Savage. To complicate matters, early 303 Savages had, some of them had 311 diameter bores and some of them had 308 diameter bores. This particular gun is from 1900, so it definitely qualifies as an early gun. So we're going to slug the bore, and we'll show you how to do that later on and we'll determine which diameter bullet we're going to use. But you have to hand load these. Uh, my casings, I picked up several, I forget how many I bought a few years ago. Uh, this is not my only 303 Savage. Again, these are my favorite gun I have. This is my second one in 303. Um, the casings are available from a company called Huntington Die Specialties. And the dies, Hornaday makes the dies, Lee makes the dies, I'm sure somebody else makes the dies. And that, um, that means, you know, you, you can hand load these, but that's the only way you can get your ammunition is to hand load them. So if you're going to buy one, you have to be willing to hand load or know somebody who can hand load them for you if you want to shoot the gun. So I want to get into this gun specifically. It is an 1899C. Now for those uninitiated, this gun's not even stamped model 1899. And then later Savage shortened it to the model 99, much as Winchester did with the 1894. They shortened it to the 94. What makes it a C and I took, I took a couple still pictures, and we'll insert those here, so in case this doesn't show up on camera. This barrel is half octagon, half round. The 1899A was a round barrel. The 1889B was a full octagon barrel. The C was half and half. This is the only C I have ever seen for sale in person. I've seen them you know, on internet sites, and I've seen them listed online, but I've never seen one that I could actually put my grimy little mitts on and examine before I purchased it. And yes, this is my gun. I bought it at an auction a short time back. So, let's get into the specifics of this gun. First off, for the for the people who really know these guns, it's, it's important to mention that most of the manufacturers back in the you know, late 1890, well, up through World War I, welcomed special orders. They wanted to compete with everybody else. They, if you wanted it, they'd do it if you were willing to pay the freight. So the book says that this gun should have a straight grip stock. If you notice back here, you've got a pistol grip stock. 
So when I went to examine the gun, my first concern was that this wasn't an original butt stock. But if you pull the butt plate off down here at the end, the serial number stamped into the bottom of the stock matches the serial number on the receiver. So this is an original stock. So this was probably a special order, a one of, it, it, it happens. The other thing that you notice if you look at this is how proud the receiver is in relation to the wood and I know that may not show up the best and, and how proud the wood is to the butt plate and everything else. So it was obvious to me when you look at how good the bluing is on this rifle as well, this gun's been refinished. And if you needed any further convincing, one look down the barrel, there is some minor pitting, nothing that will stop stop me from shooting this gun but there is some minor pitting down there in the bottom the other so this what happened was this stock was sanded down and refinished and it was sanded a little too much personally and then the other thing that gave it away this lever right here this arm for the lever should be color case hardened it's not that's blued shouldn't be blued a dead giveaway so this gun has been refinished. Um, it has the typical trigger and lever lock safety. You engage that, that thing's not going anywhere. Okay, early savages on up through the 50s, I believe, maybe the 60s. Uh, the early ones had brass uh, cartridge counters in here, zero to f zero to five, and the uh, later ones, they changed that to either aluminum or steel. I believe they used both at one time. Uh, the, the site here is a marble site. Savage offered a wide variety of sites. I believe this to be original to the gun as well. So, and Savage 99 used a rotary magazine down here, uh, a la man liquor of the day. Um, it would hold five cartridges you know, in, down in there and they, it just, it just spooled them up, rotated around and that's how it worked. So the, uh, you know, something to watch out for on these is cracking of the wood. These, these, the wood was really thin where it shouldn't have been on these. This one has a repaired crack right here on the forend tip and, but there's nothing in the buttstock other than a little longitudinal type of crack right back here at the butt plate. Uh, most of the time when they crack, they crack up here by the tang. If it has cracked, it been repaired, somebody did a very good job on it because I don't see a seam there. Last thing, most savages had this little forearm protrusion there. We'll try to get that in for you. It's called a schnabel tip. Uh, spelled multiple, multiple different ways. So... I, uh, you know, I don't even try to spell it. It was designed as a grip. It's German in origin. It was to help your offhand hold the forehand steady. So a lot of these early savages had this. Um, the 1899C was available in 303 Savage from the outset. And then I believe it was starting in 1903, they chambered the four Winchester uh, four of the five Winchester cartridges that came in their Model 1894, they chambered the 3030, which was the next most popular chambering after 303 Savage, and then they had the 2535, the 3240, and the 3855. The 32 Special, which was the other 1894 Winchester cartridge, was never chambered by Savage. I have seen them. Um where they were custom done, usually to bore out a barrel that had been shot out of a, of a 3030 or a 303, they would bore them out and re-rifle the barrels. But 32 specials are not factory original. As far as condition, the outside of this gun is obviously in excellent shape. The inside of the barrel is where I'm going to take the condition from, and it, it rates a very good to very good condition on that barrel. 
when you couple the fact that the refinishing you know made your parts proud here um that kind of you know knocks this down to the good to the very good to very good range on the condition um, if this was excellent, it would be worth far more than it is as it stands. This gun is somewhere between $1,000 and $1,200. And again, you know, that's something that our, our site at, at mygunvalues.com is designed as a guide. It's not an end-all, be-all, um, this is what it's worth set in stone. The buyer and the seller are the ones that set the the price and the value of something where we're what we're out there to do is you know if you see one in this condition been refinished don't go pay excellent condition for it it's not an excellent condition conversely if you go into a dealer with this thing and he looks at it and says well the bores bores pitted it's in crappy condition i'm only going to give you two hundred dollars walk out because he's going to put turn around and put it on his floor for if he wants a quick sale, eight hundred. If he wants to sit on it and make the most money, he's probably he's going to put it twelve, fourteen hundred dollars, and then negotiate down. So, you know, keep that in mind. But we just wanted to show you this again. We're going to do a video on slugging the bore, so that you know, we can determine which bore diameter this is, and when we get that shot, we'll put it up there for you, and then we'll uh, once we get that done just on down the road and truthfully it'll probably be this coming winter before I get around to it I want to shoot this with jacketed bullets and lead bullets and see how they behave and then I'm going to if if the lead bullets lead the bore up really bad then there's a product out there designed to coat the bore and fill in those microscopic pits and if the if need be and I haven't ever used it so if need be I'm gonna get that and try that and we'll report on how it works for you here so, you know, we thank you for watching. We encourage you to subscribe to the channel. Um, if you have any comments or questions, go ahead and post them here. Or you can reach us uh, through the MyGunValues.com website. Um, just uh, click on the Contact Us button, and it'll show you. It'll uh, direct you to one of us, and we'll be more than happy to answer your questions. Thank you for watching.